This is the most obnoxious thing I've ever experienced in my life. That's not my lunch, that's my mouth. Okay, now that we know each other on too close and maybe a little bit gross of a level, let's set some boundaries, okay? Microphone boundaries. Today we're gonna talk about microphone positioning and why getting up and close to your mic isn't necessarily the best idea. If you've ever thrown a good take in the trash because a plosive that was so bad that even Isotope said, Is a hell no, or you've taken your headphones off to make sure you didn't have mac and cheese stirring around inside of them, there's a good chance your mic is not in an ideal spot. First, Google Image Search VoiceOver Recording Studio. Bing it, if you haven't changed your default browser yet, new computer, totally understand. You know what you're gonna see? Mics that are above or below the actor's mouth. Mics that are more than a fist distance away or right here in front of the actor's face. Sure, there are some mics that are at mouth level, but wait, enhance, enhance, enhance again. Look at that. The mic is turned so that the capsule isn't pointing directly at their mouth. Why is that? Well, let's talk about why newer voice actors tend to get up and close and personal with their mics. First, the proximity effect. The proximity effect, or eating the mic, is what happens when you get close enough to a microphone's capsule that your bass frequencies don't have proper time to decay, as they would if you were in a natural conversation, resulting in more bass in the recording. Sometimes it's really cool, kind of like in a world style promo and needs to be mic'd up close so they can get that bass. It can sound really cool. However, it's kind of unnatural. It's very boomy and it sets you up to pick up all the little noodle sounds and plosives that happen when you're recording. Even if you back away from the mic a little bit, it shouldn't be head on. Directly to the forehead. Now in theory, the mic should be pointed at the money maker, your mouth, right? But if it's pointed right at this little toothy maw that just prints paychecks for you, it's downrange of every blast of air or plosive you possibly pop out there with Peter Piper with your pros. And it's like a stethoscope pointed at what you had for lunch today. Let me introduce you to the polar pattern. Chances are the mic you're working with has a cardioid polar pattern. It's named that way because it has a heart shape. I've been told by my friend Gerald that it looks like a butt. You can butt out of my educational videos, Gerald. A cardioid polar pattern has a very large area of sensitivity in the front of the capsule. So much so that typical condenser microphones don't need to be applied head on to pick up the detail in your voice. And if it's not pointed directly at your mouth, then it's not listening for the pastrami you ate or blowing out the capsule when you say the word pastrami. Next, I wanna introduce you to science. The science of sound, actually. Did you know that whenever you double your distance to the microphone, your volume changes by six decibels? It's true. According to the inverse square law, the larger the distance between you and the microphone, the more your sound energy can spread out, resulting in a drastic decrease to volume. Why is this important? Because if you're two inches from your mic and you move your head even two inches, your sound can drop by six decibels. And that's a drastic shift in volume if you're moving back and forth too much. However, if you're 12 inches away from your mic, you have to move back another foot before you suffer that same 6 dB drop. For character acting, that's a lot of room to play, and it prevents you from losing takes because your volume changes too much. Standing further away from the mic also weakens the energy of your plosives, making them less likely to blow out the capsule on that perfect take. But I get it. Some of you have probably heard the golden sound of a close mic and have yet to get your condenser in the sweet spot to experience what I'm talking about. That's why I've got the Joe Bot in the booth right now to help give you an idea. Okay, so here are a couple takes of the same line, just something totally made up, close to the mic, and then further away. There's a clone of me outside the booth and he won't let me go. There's a clone of me outside the booth and he won't let me go. So the first thing I notice is in the up close mic recording, they really kind of blow out the capsule. That's not something I'd want to deliver to a client. Also, you can hear a bit of mouth sounds between the words and when the mouth is moving to the next syllable because the mic is pointed directly into the mouth, it could pick up all the clicks and whirs and all that stuff going on in there. There's a clone of me outside the booth and he won't let me go. Now, compared to the normal distance recording where the mic is at an angle, those sounds are gone. 
the richness of the recording is still nearly the same because while yes, the mic is further away, it's still well within the cardioid pattern of the capsule. There's a clone of me outside the booth and he won't let me go. Now that we've proven that eating the mic and pointing directly at your mouth aren't ideal for voiceover recordings, how should we position the mic properly? Well, there are a few ways to do this, but it's important to understand your mic's polar pattern to make sure you find the best position for your mic. If you're working with a condenser or a dynamic mic, chances are it's a cardioid polar pattern, which gives you a lot of room to play. It's not the only pattern, of course. The MKH416, which is my favorite shotgun mic and actually the mic I'm talking into right now, has a hypercardioid pattern. That means the mic is more directionally sensitive, but as you can tell by the fact that it's not in the shot, it doesn't need to be up close either. It's actually about 18 inches away from my mouth right now. Ultimately, as long as your voice is projecting within your mic's polar pattern and the energy is moving towards the capsule rather than away from the capsule, you're going to capture your sound as if you were facing the microphone directly. For distance, I like eight to 12 inches away from the mic. It's different from when I'm booming it for a video. I can need it to be a little further away here, but in the booth, eight to 12 inches is great. Seriously, can I leave? I gotta go to the bathroom. This allows me to move around and act appropriately to the character in the scene without resulting in any plosives or any big dynamic changes to my volume. I also position the mic to the side, actually above my mouth level and pointing down so that any air that leaves my mouth isn't going directly into the capsule. You may also notice that I angle the mic a bit. This is for a few reasons, but the core of it is that the capsule is still picking up my voice without being in the way to pick up the clicks of my mouths or blasts of air from my plosives. Of course, if you're working with a dynamic mic like the SM7B or RE20, you'll need to be closer to the mic because they're less sensitive. But the other ideas still apply. Point it towards your mouth, but position it maybe slightly above or below or to the side of your mouth to reduce the plosives and mouth clicks. So there you have it. The trick to reducing plosives and mouth clicks starts with proper mic positioning. Taking advantage of the proximity effect has its uses for some reads, but generally speaking, it's better to position the mic further away and at an angle. To find the sweet spot, you'll need to play around with your mic's positioning, your voice, your room. You'll be surprised at how good it can sound, even if the mic isn't right in your face. Well, voice actors, I guess it's time to let the me in the booth stretch his legs a little bit. I hope this video was helpful. Get into your recording space and play around with your positioning. If you deal with plosives, see what you can do to reduce or eliminate them with just a little bit of mic positioning. If you found this video helpful or insightful, it'd be really cool if you left a like and a subscribe. It helps me educate the next generation of voice actors. And if you're ready to start your voice acting career, I have some other free resources available for you in the description below this video. Go get behind the mic, but don't eat it.